Hebrews 11 and 8, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. Please listen to this next sentence. He went without knowing where he was going. I'm going to say it again. He went without knowing where he was going. If you're not too mean, if you got a little faith, just repeat after me. Say, Lord, Lord I'm trusting you because right, right now, I just don't know. Just don't know. You may be seated. I just want to talk from that topic today. I don't know. And every person on a faith journey said, amen. I think it's safe to say that we live in a world full of addicts. I believe it's safe to say that we live in a world full of addicts. Some people are addicted to alcohol. Some people are addicted to drugs. Some people are addicted to attention. It's somebody thirsty on one of y'all rows. Somebody's addicted to pornography. Somebody's addicted to their phone. Sadly, addiction is not just getting high. Addiction is not being able to live without the thing that gets you high. Addiction is not just getting high. It is the inability to live without the very thing that gets you high. Addiction isn't being inebriated. It's feeling like when life gets thick, you have to do it. Addiction isn't just the drug. It's the feeling that I can't function without it. Addiction just isn't attention. It's doing too much so you can be seen. Addiction isn't just it. It's the inability to feel that you can't live without it. And out of all the addictions I just listed, I believe that the greatest addiction that our generation is facing right now that's paralyzing our faith is our addiction to answers. It's our addiction to answers. Please write this. It is impossible to live by faith when you can't live without answers. It is impossible to live by faith when you can't live without answers. And as I say that, a light bulb just went off for three people. Because you got a little arrogant when I said addicted to alcohol, you stuck your chest out. When I said addicted to drugs, you held your head high. When I said addicted to attention, you said I ain't never needed nobody. But I think I stepped on your toes. When I said some of us are addicted to answers. The problem you have right now is you want to know when it's going to happen. How it's going to happen. Where will it happen? When the reality of our faith is that we may not know how, we have to hold on to who. And I got a sneaky suspicion there are two types of people sitting on your road. One of y'all are stressing because you don't know when and you don't know how. Then there's another person who's comfortable because you know who. You don't know how he's going to pay the bill so you can't sleep at night. You don't know how he's going to come through this week. So now you're irritated, aggravated, and frustrated. I'm not being funny, but I am done losing sleep over the how. I'm connected to the who. See, this is how you can tell the difference between praisers. You are not a real praiser if you can only shout with evidence. You are a praiser when you have the ability to shout when you don't have any of the answers. How you shout and the bill ain't paid yet? Because I know he may not do it when I want him to, but I know he's still able and I don't know who I'm preaching to this may be a relief for three people in the room because you've been overly eagerly frustrated uh, irritated and aggravated because lately you've been trying to map out different things in your life and you've been saying God I just need 
answers. I am at a season in my life that I now thank God for the places of my life that I don't have the answers. Because you want to know what I discovered? Half of the time that I had the answer, what God wanted to do was bigger than what I was planning to do. Michael, the reality of our faith is that we will not always know, we do know who God and who God is. We do not always know what God will do. I don't know about you. I know God will be a healer. I just don't know when or how he's going to heal. I know God to be a provider. I am frustrated because I don't know when or how he's going to provide. I know that God is a way maker, but my frustration is I expected him to make a way last week. He didn't make a way when I wanted him to make a way. And some of us are frustrated because we believe that we should treat God like Google. And the reason half of our faith is not where it needs to be because we live in an information age. And because we live in an information age, you can press www.google.com and put my right finger is hurting and it hurts on the inside. What does that mean? And then Google tells you your finger about to fall off in two days and the rest of your hand going to turn green. This just an infection. And because you can Google it, and get an immediate response or an answer. And the problem with some of us is not that we don't have an answer. The problem is we didn't get the answer. Who going to help your boy preach today? That we want it. And when you don't get the answer that you want, you then go from person to person trying to get them to affirm the answer that you did want. So when God said leave, you would ask another friend, have you heard anything from me? I just ain't heard. Now, God bless you. Have you heard anything from me? No, God bless you. Have you heard anything from me? God, have you heard? And then when you finally get a response that matches what you wanted to hear, you feel good. When God is not required to meet your preference. God is not required to meet your preference. And the problem is, do you want God or Google? Which, which one? Are you so desperate for an answer that you'll, you'll step out on any response? And many of us are addicted to answers. We are addicted to information. God, I will trust you if you tell me what's coming. I will believe you if you show me now what the next step will be. When we don't walk by information, we walk by faith and not by sight. And many of you are in danger of missing God because you feel you can't move until you get an answer. You feel as if I can't trust God until I get an answer, Leslie. I feel as if if I don't move the way uh, I can't fully function in what God is calling me to do because I don't have all of the details when God is not a God of details. He is a God of incremental information. Michael, he is a God of incremental information. God will give you a piece of a thing then expect you to move. Then when you don't move, he'll stop talking. But then when he stops talking, then you feel abandoned. And because you don't have faith and you don't know how to deal with silence, you then start searching for answers when you already got a word. Because when God ever calls you to something, the power to fulfill what he called you to do is in the call. Michael, you missed it. When God said go, you didn't need to know how it was going to come to pass. All you needed to do was go. Because God will give you something. I'm preached to this side. God will give you something called provision. Okay? You didn't shout because you wanted to shout, but the people sitting next to you didn't know what provision was. So you didn't want to look like you were smarter than them. So I saw you, girl. You just had to praise them on the low. When I said provision, you said, you got ready to lift your hands, but then you looked to the left and she didn't know what she was doing. So then all of a sudden you just hit them with a... So so what's provision? Provision means God is talking to you on Sunday. But before he talked to you on Sunday, last Thursday, he put a blessing in your Wednesday. 
And what he's telling you is, I'm going to tell you to go on Sunday. I'm not going to tell you it's waiting for you on Wednesday. But if you just bust a move, you get ready to walk into the very thing I prepare for you. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody came to church today in the room and online and you've been saying, Lord, I need confirmation. Here's your confirmation. Get ready to bust your faith move. Get ready to experience one of the best seasons of your life because you're walking in faith. And when we tiptoe into the corridors of today's text, we meet a brother who is considered the father of faith. I like Abraham. Pa- Pastor Abraham is cold. You do know his name ain't really Abraham, right? His name's Abraham. He got changed. His first name was what? Abram. His name was Abram. Then all of a sudden, he becomes the father of faith. He becomes Abraham. Even in nursery school, we learned about Abraham, didn't we? Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left foot, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right on, left foot, right. You had no idea that the song was about obedience. See, they were telling, see, they were preaching, but you missed it. They were saying he was a father. Because he was obedient. And the whole key to the song was could you remain faithful to the last word? See, they would tell you to move your right arm, then move your left arm, then move your right and left foot. But don't forget the first thing I told you. And many of you keep missing God because God told you something last year. And you thought because the calendar changed, the conversation changed. My God! God said the calendar changed, but the conversation didn't change. You waiting on a new word when you still ain't been obedient to the last word. Abraham is a man of faith. He's a man of faith. One one scholar called him a knight of faith. Another scholar called him the father of faith. When we find Abraham situated and acculturated in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, chapter 11 is cold. Hear me when I say this. If you ever want to swag and you ever need your faith, mama, go to Hebrews chapter 11. That's what most scholars call the hall of faith. Not the hall of fame, hall of faith. First brother in the hall of faith is Abel. He shows us the life of faith. Then you got Enoch, who I can't preach about when I talk about this whole black church studies piece in August. Enoch, Enoch has the walk of faith because, you know, Enoch walked with God and was no more. Y'all ain't ready for that discussion. Enoch walks with God, then he's no more. You got Abel, Abel, who has a life of faith. Jesus Christ. You got Enoch who shows us the walk of faith. Then you got Noah who shows us the work of faith. See, Hebrews is so cold-blooded because Paul is trying to get them to realize that because of an apostate society, they are trying to condition believers to believe that your salvation came by work. You had to do in order to be saved. When Paul is saying, no, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when we find Abraham in Hebrews 11 and 8, it says it was by faith that Abraham obeyed. Do, do me a favor. Can, I want you to put this in your phone, put this in your notes. It's not going to be deep, but I think it's very potent. You ready for this? Faith isn't just for the impossible. It's also for the ordinary. See, we got to stop. We got to stop. Michael, what's the right word I want to use if you're watching right now? We, we got to stop. Uh, well, what's something when you, when, when you um, put a whole lot of emphasis on one thing versus another? Say it again. Okay, we got to stop putting more emphasis 
on incredible. So here's what we do. Let me show you what we do wrong in church because church has become programmed to response. All of church, this is why I got to break this up. All of church has become a slave to response. We pick songs based off if you're going to like them. We preach sermons based off if you're going to like them. We create service based off if you're going to like it. If we sit in a room and decide to sing a song, the first thing some people say is they're not going to like that. As if we're singing to you. Then when it's time to preach, we said, we can't preach that. That's going to make them uncomfortable. And if they're uncomfortable, they're not going to come back. So let's just keep it light. <laughs> so the problem is because we've become a slave to response, we now put an exaggerated view on the impossible. So here's what we do. When we want a response out the crowd, we say stuff like this. I want to bring up sister so-and-so. She had faith and got the promotion. And we shout. I want to, I want to bring up brother so-and-so. He was sick and by faith he believed he would be healed and he's healed. So we have conditioned the next generation of Christians to think faith is only reserved for impossible miracles. Testimony service should be like this. Hey, y'all, God bless you. Woke up this morning and um, yeah, by faith went outside, car crunk up. By faith, went to this job knowing good and well I didn't want to be there. Kind of planned to hit somebody when I got there, but by faith, didn't throw no hands. All right, so then I made it through the whole day, didn't have no money for lunch, but you know what? By faith, I found something at the bottom of my purse. You know how you keep that little change at the bottom of your purse? I found a little change at the bottom of my purse, went to Wendy's. It was like $3 worth of change, got me a 99 cent nugget, 99 junior bacon cheeseburger. Ain't God good. Then I also crunked my cob and made it back home by faith on, on half a tank. Now, my, my light been on since Thursday, but it was the great. See, see, faith ain't just for the miracle. Faith is also for obedience. Abraham says, now I want you to catch this because what I want you to realize is in this particular sentence, it says, by faith, oh, there it is, by faith, Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave. Can you underline that? Can you put that in your phone? By faith, Abraham obeyed when God called. Biblically, contextually, that's what we call a present participle. Present participle. A present participle means that statement is simultaneous. Michael, that statement is simultaneous. So the problem with this particular text is because when you don't do the right history or get the context, you read it wrong, so then you live wrong, which means you obey wrong. Yeah, so what you thought it was, God called Abraham, Abraham got a word, then Abraham moved. When the text is a present participle, it, it, is, not, it is the picture that while God was talking, Abraham was moving. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Abraham wasn't like this. Abraham, yes, Lord. I'm getting ready to send you to a place. I need you to go to that place, and I'm going to show you later. Yes, Lord. Then he walks. No, Abraham, I might run. Abraham said, God, yes, Lord. I need you to get ready to, to go. See, 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 if I wait on God to get done, that means I'm still not really operating in obedience. Because when God calls me, I should already be in tune with him. Okay, okay, every parent, give me a what, what? If you don't, if you don't help me preach, we gonna fight today. Every parent, give me a what, what? Every parent who lazy like me and couldn't wait to have kids so you can make them do something for you, give me a what, what? Every parent who lazy, who needs your child to do something, but they not in the room with you. Can I ask you a question? Do you call them and tell them what you want? Or do you just call their name? You don't say, Mike, bring me the remote so I can watch ESPN because the Lakers about to play. No, you say what? Mike. Now, when you say Mike, that one word Mike, because of who said it, carries a whole different meaning than if his brother said it. When his brother say Mike, it means I need your attention. When I say Mike, I need your action. Because if I have to call your name again, we going to have a problem. And God told me to tell you while you sitting in here clapping, if I have to call your name again, we about to have a problem. This is your season to walk in. 
Somebody say obedience. It is obedience. So, so, so when God started talking, Abraham started moving. When God started talking, Abraham started moving because he had relationship with him. This is good. Relationship with him. Relationship with him. See, see, see. <laughs> see, when you got relationship with somebody, their tone, demeanor, and voice tells you what your response should be. Yeah, yeah, all right. Every brother sitting next to you, old lady, uh, just don't say amen. Uh, Cause I, I I don't I don't want you to get hit in church. I don't, I don't want you to get hit in church. Uh, no, but but if she hits you and say, "Hey, how your day going? Good. How uh, cool?" You, you can you can hear her tone if she wants something. Uh, you you can hear in her tone um, if she bored. You can hear in your tone if she just miss you. Even when she fussing, you can tell if it's a real fuss or a spoil fuss. You know, now she just missed me. Let me go ahead to the house. She ain't nothing wrong with her for real. She just spoiled. Just want me to go and come home. That's all that is. Just want, just want me to come home. It's cool. She, she don't really want nothing. No, but, but, but something different hits your spirit. When, when, when she just look at you certain day like, who this? <laughs> now, now, now you, you ain't even seen the who yet. But because you, you discerned the tone. Something in your spirit became alert. And the question I want to ask you this morning is, are you that disconnected that his voice don't require or demand an automatic response? See, when I drive a stick, I have to tell my car to shift. When I drive an automatic, we don't have a conversation. It knows when I hit a certain level. Shift. When you become stagnant in Christ, God sends someone or he sends something. What if, ooh, 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 what if you pray and asking God to take away the thing he sent to make you shift? <laughs> It's like I keep praying and it just won't stop because he sent it. <laughs> my God, oh my God. He said, I'm going to send you to the land that I'm going to give you. Now, I want you to catch this. He said, wood. Somebody say wood. wood. Am I doing okay today? Yeah. Say wood. wood. Come on, say it like you mean wood. wood. No, you, you got to say it like a preacher. Wood. wood. Yeah, wood. You got to shake your head a like wood. <laughs> Come on now, Wood. Now, now, would, put this in your notes, is a future tense conditional verb. Would is a future tense conditional verb. Now, what's the most important part of what I just said? Future conditional. Conditional verbs are constructions of verbs that are used uh, in conditional sentences. Now, conditional sentences express something that might happen depending on whether or not a particular condition is met. Wow. So he says, I have an inheritance that I would give you, which means it is conditional. Michael, conditional, meaning if you do this, I am going to do this. So what's conditional? Please put this in your notes. It's a promised reaction in response to an initial action. Conditional is a promised reaction in response to an addition in an initial action. Make, 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 that, make that make sense. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. God, God says, God says, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, my God. He says, I got an inheritance. And that should set the whole church up right there. Inheritance. See, most of us haven't been left nothing but problems. Yeah, so, so in our community, especially in the African-American community, while I'm pushing all of those who follow me to get life insurance and to get policies and term policies, I'm trying to push you to get whole life policies, policies where you can put cash in each month, then 10, 20 years from now, you can take the cash out of that. Pre-pandemic, I bought all, brought all these insurance people in. I'm going to do it again in this, this summer, and I'm going to bring them in and show you how there are certain life insurance policies you need. You need one policy that the moment you die, it's just enough to pay off your funeral. 
world. That may be $25, $30 a month, $5, $10 a month, boom. But then you get another whole life policy, that whole life policy, universal life policy. So now you putting that money in your policy, right? You putting that money in your policy. So when you turn 55, they're going to look back at you and say, hey, you know, you got like a quarter million dollars in your whole life policy. You're like, yeah, I know. I was intentional. So then you're going to tell them, no, bring me my 100000 I need that 100000 to do so and so so. I put, so. Come on. Come on. Oh, y'all just want to talk about Jesus. Okay, so let's just talk about Jesus. I'm trying to get you saved and paid, but that's just for the three folk who want it. All right, all right so, so, but, but you got to have your affairs in order. See, when I die, I don't want to leave Rock City problems. No, no. When I die, church payoff, salaries go in the bank, kids get an inheritance at 18, 30, lady get paid. I'm not going to tell her how much because she just might get rid of me at some point. So, so everybody happy. Everybody happy. But if I live, hear me now, it's going to be crazy. See, but the problem is most of us don't get inheritance. We have to do GoFundMes just to bury our folks. We have to argue about the funeral. We can't even grieve for trying to figure out how we're going to bury them. So when the scripture said an inheritance, most people from an African-American context don't understand an inheritance. What's an inheritance, somebody? An inheritance means I have something waiting on you that you didn't work for, that you necessarily didn't earn. It's yours because of your name. Michael so hear me when I say this but it's conditional hear me when I say this watch this he says the inheritance is there you are here breakthrough is there you are here no what the blessing is there Abraham you're here here's what I'm gonna do go where I'll tell you later but you gotta go and if you go to where I ain't going to tell you till you get there. When you get there, it's something waiting on you. But where it's there, I can't tell you. But if you get to where I can't tell you, it's going to be something waiting on you. But if you stay here, it's still going to be there. You just ain't going to get it. My God. And many of you are frustrated because you got a word from God. Who knowing your heart, crazy as you are, God made you a promise. You want to know why you frustrated? Because you got the promise. But you ain't seen the manifestation. And God told me to tell you, you're not going to see it here. The manifestation comes there. Pastor Mike, where's there? I don't know. Because my there ain't sure there. See, our theirs aren't similar, but our theirs are nagalas. Talks I'm preaching. See, our theirs are not geographical sometimes. They're uh, metaphorical. There for you may be learning how to keep your mouth closed. God may be saying your there is keeping your mouth closed and learning how to be quiet and not always having to talk and not always having to give people a piece of your mind. When you get humility, I'm going to release it. Whereas my there may be telling folk to leave me alone. Which is why you got to be careful when you sit in these circles comparing theirs. Because if you keep trying, you're going to mess around and go to their there and be at their there, watching them enjoy their there, while you're there, wondering why that there ain't your there, because that there ain't your there, because your there should have been there. I, I, got, I need a better church. I'm preaching way better than your action. Because you do know that there are two types of theirs. T-H-E. I-E-R-T-H-E-R-E. -E -E. One means possession. Another one is geographical. And God told me to tell you that some of y'all are about to get possessive. That means it's some stuff that should have been yours. But the devil tricked you out of your inheritance. So I'm getting ready to put it back into your life. Then some of y'all got to move to another direction. And when you get there, don't go back and bring folk who didn't believe in your bear into your bear. Slap somebody high five and shout, get there. You in the wrong neighbor. Reach over that hater and just high five another neighbor and say, get there. I'm not waiting on you this year. I'm not coaching you this year. I'm not going to be your cheerleader this year. Both of us grown. All of us grown. You told me you wanted it. You told me you needed to be free. You told me you wanted another level. If you want it, get 
up and go get it. Grandmama said, I just wanna go. There, 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 there. Grandmama tried to tell you, she said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. Grandmama, where you going? It was there. What? By. Because there always requires faith. And many of you going to miss your there because you need information. And I like what the scripture says. He says it was by faith. Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him, would give him as an inheritance. It was by faith, which means while he was talking, Abraham was moving. God said, it's a land I'm going to give you, uh, I would give you as an inheritance, but it's conditional. I'm only going to give it to you if you keep moving. I'm only going to give it to you if you keep moving. You know what's crazy? Have you ever went somewhere with your kids and your kids had information but still had aggravation? No, I need real parents right here. That you told them, we're going to Orlando. Ooh, we're going to Disney World. Going to Disney World. We're going to Six Flags, Daddy. We're going to Six Flags. Okay, cool. Then you put them in the car and you told them you was going to Six Flags and you told them you was going to Six Flags and you told them you're going to Six Flags. This trip didn't require faith. It didn't require nothing but for them to get in the car, shut up, and just ride. And 10 minutes into the ride. Mom, are we there yet? No, we're not yet. We're still at center point, baby. Okay. Mama, are we there yet? Baby, we at the Leeds Mall. Come on now, just be quiet. Mama, are we there yet? We're in Alabama, baby. I'm not going to tell you again. This is Aniston. Be quiet. Mama, uh, shut up! Fuck, take all y'all back home right now! Don't say nothing else in this time! Look at you laughing. When God sent me here as your bus driver to say, shut up! Don't ask me about that job no more! Don't ask me about that bill no more! Don't ask me about that money no more! If I said I was gonna do it, shut up! And trust me. But now, you just like your kids. You just like your kids. I've been tired now all year. He ain't did it yet. He ain't did it yet. Pastor, can you pray for me? What? Can you pray for me, Pastor? What? I'm, I'm just tired. This relationship just driving me crazy. I don't know what to do. I just need God to just remove all the stress out of my life. All right, I'm going to pray for you. Boom. Next Sunday, Pastor, pray for me. It's like he left me and now my friend won't answer the phone. You told me to tell him to remove the stress. I'm sorry. I, not, not that. I, I was talking about the other stuff. I need that back. All right, cool. Hey, God, she said she wanted back. All right, boom, send it to you again. God, I just don't know. I'm just tired of this cycle. Will you make up your mind? In this season, God is saying, give me your obedience. Give me your obedience. I'm preparing something for you. I am preparing something for you. For you, many of you came to church today. Many of you logged in online today. You didn't have a clue what song we were singing. You didn't know if James was gonna sing, Kurt was gonna sing, Terrell was gonna sing, Amanda was gonna sing. We hit you with a curveball today. Jill came up walking out the side singing her solo. Did y'all see how she hit you like the old school temptation? She was just over here singing regular, but in her head, she like I'm finna kill him in about two minutes. She over here just talking to y'all like she ain't got nothing to do. It's all, he's leaning in my wondering what tonight, yeah. I came to tell you what. And I'm like, look at you. None of y'all saw that coming. You want to know why? You just woke up this morning. You, okay, I got to preach. They told me to preach online. And okay, let me try to get it together. Okay, okay person oh my, okay okay some of y'all didn't have a clue some of y'all didn't have a clue what was gonna happen today you didn't have a clue if we were gonna sing this song if I was gonna preach this message if we was gonna do this all you knew was I come to church expecting it's not your job to plan church it's our job to plan church 
and it's your job to experience it. And God told me to tell you, stop trying to walk in on my planning means when I'm scheduling your year. Put your order in. If your order don't match my will for you, it will be denied. I don't care how much you cry. I don't care how much money you put in that bucket. I don't care what you do. If I see this is going to be self-destructive, I don't have a problem blocking you from it. Jesus. See, 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 some of y'all shout because God made a way. I shout because God got in the way. Some of y'all shout that he answered prayers. I shout, God, I shout for every prayer that he did not answer. Because if God would have gave me half the stuff I asked for, I would be crazy, right? Hey, 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 why you think, why, why you think God put Adam to sleep, then gave him Eve? Eve would have, Adam would have been in the way. He would have been in the way. You want to know why? Because God says, you got to go back a slide. God, God, God literally says, I can plan something for you without planning something with you. I'm finna run. I'm finna run. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, y'all just, this, 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 I need the early morning service. This, this service right here, just too hard. Y'all be sitting here looking at me like y'all actually thought, well, you didn't know I was going to say that. God says, I, I can plan something for you without planning something with you. Okay, 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 okay. This cold this cold okay? Mike, 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 Mike. Mason's birthday is next, okay? Mason, Mason's birthday is next. If I'm not mistaken, I think Mason's gonna be 13, okay? Mason finally finna be 13. We're going all out. It's 13th birthday, going all out. Going all out. I'm, I'm talking about all out. Water slides, friends over. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go all out. Whatever he want, it's done. He like football. I'm gonna have jerseys, all type of stuff. I'm inboxing NFL players now. Like, hey, my son love you. Ain't got no responses. But everybody, finna, I'm falling in every NFL player DM. If any of y'all ladies need me to put a request in for you while I'm in them DMs, let me know. But I'm going hard. Look, I receive, Pastor. Look, I am going hard. Odell, everybody. Hey, what's up, Odell? My son, love you here, receiver. He used to say happy birthday. I'm finna go all out for Mason's birthday. He turning 13. I'm excited. You wanna know what's crazy? He has no say so on the party. Now, conversely, lady finna turn 40 And she telling me what we gonna do <laughs> She's not finna turn 40 I want the party to be like this Then I wanna leave the party the next day And you take me here Then when we get here I want you to do so and so, so and so Here's what I'm expecting I'm sending you links now Cause they expensive Okay, so this the bag I want. I want you so and so. I'm turning 40. I'll never, you know how y'all women do, you, you, you reverse. I'll never ask you for none. I'll never bother you for none. I, I, this the one time I'm asking what, cause, because at certain levels of life, you get control. How you an immature saint thinking you can be in mature rooms? How you have read thinking you can discern? Part time Christians can't defeat full time devils. <laughs> and I see a cycle this is critical I'm finna stop I see a cycle because God tells Abraham do me a favor Abraham I want you to go to a place that I'm gonna show you but I'm not gonna tell you what's the cycle because in Genesis chapter 11 God tells his daddy the same thing God tells his daddy Terah I want you to bust a faith move and the Bible says hey on one day Terah took his son Abram Who's really Abraham? This is pre-name change. His daughter-in-law, Sarai, who's Abram's wife, his grandson, Lot, and moved away from Ur of Chaldeans. He was headed to the land of Canaan, okay? All right, I need y'all help, all my Bible scholars. What's Canaan? Promised land. Canaan is the promised land. This is where all the children of Israel are trying to go, to Canaan. The promised land, the blessed place. What happens? They stop in Haran and settle. Okay, I want to paint the picture. I want to paint the picture. Haran is sort of this intersection of business. Haran is almost like this little port you go to, this little small city, the city you go to, but you can go everywhere from Haran. So people who sold stuff will come to Haran and trade stuff. Okay, this is the equivalent of you booking a ticket to California. Going to Atlanta and falling in love with the airport and decide to live in it. 
Don't confuse your layover with your final destination. So can't you see yourself? Oh, they got a whole PF chains on, 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 on the A gate. Over here, we're going to go to the PF. Oh, you look at that shine, John. They got a shine. Oh, my God. Is that Gucci? Oh, my God. Hey, come here, come here, come here. You know you can rent these spots and just sleep in here for the rest of the night? Let's get one. And you just go to sleep. Then you wake up the next day and you go to Terminal C and they got some more stores. Then you just say, we'll just stay one more night. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Because Haran is the place of comfort. You don't kill giants from comfort. Can I ask you a question? Would David be remembered if he remained comfortable? I'm not going out there on that battlefield. There's tension out there. I remain over here. Y'all didn't like me anyway. Would Daniel be remembered if he remained comfortable? Trust God. The devil is alive. Whatever they tell us to eat, let's eat. Look at this. Everybody in our family got killed but us. And now they're telling us all we got to do is eat what they eat and do what they say? Please. I'm finna eat good off the king's table? Would Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego be remembered if they said, no, look, man, let's just bow. They don't know who we are anyway. Let's just go and bow and deal with it. Once we bow, all of a sudden they leave us alone. We go back to our room. We can say, God, forgive me. Which one you want, comfort or conflict? Because conflict going to get you remembered. See, when you choose conflict, hell know you. You want to know the greatest mistake? Oh, my God. You want to know the greatest mistake we make when we spiritually immature? This is cold-blooded. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm sorry. Do me a favor. If you're watching online right now, they just looking at me in here like, I guess the word too hard. And, and look, I ain't preaching them for real in two years anyway. I don't even miss them for real. You really know the truth. I like preaching in the room by myself because y'all make me feel so much better online. Y'all do stuff like give me hearts. They can't even give me hearts in here. I wish something. Like this girl over here looking at me doing They're like, I don't know what that is. Hey, what's that, a heart? So look, online, just give me a heart. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I miss y'all. I'm going to just be online again because they, they don't get it. See, because when you're spiritually immature, you start discerning stuff wrong. Yeah, you discern stuff wrong. So, 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 so here's what you do. Here's what you do. When you're spiritually immature, you look at problems as problems and peace as peace. When you're spiritually mature, you look at problems as peace and peace as problems. Because if I got a problem, I'm safe in his arms. If I don't have a problem, the devil plotting. <clears throat> When stuff get quiet in my life, I pray harder. Y'all miss what I just said. Pastor Mike, see, because this is what you did. You said to yourself, oh, I'm good. It's like, it's like I ain't catching no hell. I'm finally at, at peace. See, and this is what we do. Let me show you how fake we are in church. Let me show you how fake we are. Let me show you how fake we are. Let me show you how fake we are. If we see somebody going through, the first thing we think is what they doing. So-and-so going through. I don't know what they got going on. Favor? No. Dogs don't chase park cars. If the devil ain't chasing you, it's because you, he might be running with you. Some of you looking at your friend like you always catch a hell. And the devil like, ain't she? Y'all miss what I just said. No. See, the reason you get problems it's because the devil peeked over into your future and saw how you were about to prosper. All problems, now let me give you context. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm out. They wait, they said I'm out of time. Shall I proceed? Yes, indeed. Let's go. So, so hear me when I say this. So here's what you do. You look at your life and say stuff. So, so baby boy, this is what we do, okay? We do stuff like, we do stuff like, if your mama stopped fussing at you, that might mean she tired. All right, so, so, so does she tell you to clean your room? All right, she, she tell you a lot? Okay, so clean your room. How old are you? 13. All right, so you're 13. Big man. Okay, so mama coming up. I'm, I'm, clean your room. Clean your room. All right, so let me, let me free you real quickly. If your room still ain't clean by this summer and she stopped fussing, you should get scared. You want to know why? Because at this point, you don't respect her exousia. 
See, exousia is authority. That's the Greek word for authority. Exousia is the authority or the badge. See, see, exousia means when I say stop, you stop. See, but if you don't respect my exousia, you're going to respect my dunamis. Dunamis is where we get our American word dynamite, the boom. So, see, you're going to respect the badge or the gun. Which one? Are you going to respect his voice or the rod? Can I ask you a question? If God keeps looking at you saying, trust me, and you keep doing your own thing, keep doing your own thing, Keep doing your own thing. I, I'd rather leave certain stuff broke than fix it myself. Right. Hear me. Hear me when I say this. Because you know what I discovered? If I touch something, he told me not to touch, I then become in opposition of him. So if I fix it, he will in turn break me. And so what I'm trying to get you to realize is comfort ain't always a blessing. Many of you think the more money I get, I'm going to be comfortable. There was this prophet from Brooklyn who said, more money. More problems. Man, if I get a bigger house, we'll be happy. A bigger house, everybody got their own room. Now you fussing at him to clean up his room and downstairs. Because the environment ain't going to change your action. <laughs> oh my God, I got to stop. I got to stop. He says, why did you settle? And bro, this is cold-blooded. Because his daddy settles. Abraham gets the same word. Now I want you to picture this. He lived in the... I got to say it better. He lived in his father's settle. So I want to make this make sense. If he lived in his father's settle and had somewhat of a good life, how do you convince me that which I cherish was wrong? That's why some of our relationships mirror our parents as dysfunctional as they were. See, because when you live in dysfunction, you become accustomed to dysfunction Thus, you search for dysfunction because dysfunction becomes familiar. Oh, they don't love me if we ain't fussing and cussing. No, that's real love right there. No, it's not. That's a headache. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. In your family, are you going to be the one who settled or the one who kept moving? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? The Lord said to Abraham, and I'm finna stop. He said, he said, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I'm gonna show you. No information. Only, only information he got was leave the familiar. And can I free you? Why would he make him leave his homeland? Because his homeland is what? Familiar. Or can I free you real quickly? There are answers in his homeland. Who been living somewhere longer than two or three years? Throw your hands up. You, 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 three years. You don't, you don't need your GPS to leave here, do it? No. You just leave here. How you look leaving church, putting your GPS in? Well, let me find out how to get home. You don't need, you don't need an answer. You only put an address in your GPS when you don't have the answer. You are, you will be remembered for the problems you caused or the problems you solve. Do I need to say that again? You're going to be remembered for the problems you solved or the problems you caused. What are you sitting in right now? A solved problem. Somebody was standing around saying, I don't feel like standing all day. Let me solve that problem. Thus you get the chair. How you got to church and a solved problem. God has called, I do not believe God has called all of us to be entrepreneurs. I believe there's a level of, 
of anointing for spiritual entrepreneurship and intelligence. I am not one of those people who say everybody can own a business. I do not believe that. I do not believe that. Let me say that, but I believe everybody can own one. I don't believe everybody knows how to be successful in owning it. That's a skill. Just like it's certain stuff you do with ease, somebody else couldn't do with ease. Certain people were just born to do stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? But you want to know what's going to be a tragedy in life? Did I say that right? Travesty or tragic? Travesty? Tra- when you, want, you want to know what... <laughs> you, want to, ah, you want to know what... Would, shucks. Be, do you want to know what will be a travesty in life? For God to call you to be a problem solver and you live the rest of your life in somebody's solved problem. We had a disconnection problem, mama. We had a disconnection problem. Adam sinned. He disconnected us from heaven. God tells Noah to fix it. Noah becomes an alcoholic and has issues. We're still disconnected. He says, I just sent my son Jesus to solve the disconnection problem. Everything in life solves a problem. Find the problem you are ordained to solve, you'll find your prosperity. Because when God wants to give you something new, it requires you to let go of something old. And many of you are frustrated right now because you're saying, God, I need, what I need to do, Pastor Mike? Number one, you have to forget the familiar. The path you're taking may not be the path you're familiar with. You know what I'm saying? It may not be familiar. It may not be familiar. In my life right now, I'm having to meet new people. And y'all know I got anxiety. Like, I got strong anxiety. Strong anxiety. I look, who are you? Like, strong, (laughs) strong anxiety. You did a good job. Why you say that? What you mean by that? Like, I, I got anxiety. But in this season, I'm having to meet new people. Like, hey, how you doing, man? God bless you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I be feeling insecure sometimes. You be meeting these people, and then they be super little. Like, these people we be seeing on TV be super slim. And you just be looking like, oh, wow. What you know what I'm saying? Like, super insecure. I got to tell myself, okay, God, I'm in a new environment. 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 But I'm called to it. See, because certain environments enable. I'm finna free you. Hearing good job from people who love you and care about you is different than hearing good job from people who don't need nothing from you. See, sometimes, I need you to catch this. Sometimes God will place you in different environments to validate you to you. Not that the people in the old environment didn't validate you. No, you became comfortable with their validation. Therefore, since you became familiar with their praise, it no longer carried potency. So sometimes God says, change the environment. Now that you change the environment, have the faith to follow. I just need answers. Hear me when I say this. God always gives information. I don't want to say always. God sometimes gives information incrementally. And let me stop. When you can't trust the instruction, trust the instructor. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you got to get comfortable saying, I don't know. Is I'm going to take you to the land in which I'm going to show you. So when they ask you, what's the plan for the rest of the year? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You need a plan. Says who? Says who? How many years I done put stuff on paper and did that? Can we, can we be honest for a second? Culture will tell you what's the plan. I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to be very clear. I don't know. I don't know. I'm out here on faith. I'm out here on faith. When I get there, God going to show me. Has God ever showed you something? Then all of a sudden, it, it clicked while all the other stuff jumped off. And then you sit back and be like, you, <laughs> that boy, you a bad boy. Because he's ordering your steps. Father, in Jesus' name, 
give us the faith to obey. Not just the faith to step off and leave a job, man. Not just faith to start the business and faith to go apply for the house and faith. Like, God, you're not a genie in a bottle. You're God. And God is arrogant of us to want your stuff without submitting. So, God, if you don't mind, just give us faith to obey, and it's hard. God, if you tell us to go, we're going to go. If you tell us to stay, we're going to stay. If you tell us to be quiet, we'll be quiet. God, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I can't figure you out. Every time I think we're going left, you tell me to go right. And when I go right, sometimes you tell me to go left. God, I'm at a point now where I just simply say, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. God, give that brother in this room who's trying his best to be the man for his family. But it's hard because sometimes he don't have the answers. And as a man, God, sometimes that's one of the most frustrating places to be. She looking at you like, what we going to do? Kids looking like, what we going to do? On top of the self-pressure we put on ourselves because we the man. And sometimes saying, I don't know, feels weak. And then sometimes her frustration may cause her to lash out. What you mean? I don't know. You need to. And God, so now we have a fear of just being honest and transparent. So to that brother right now, give him a peace in this moment that God is not his job to figure this one out. It's his job to show his family how to walk in faith. So give him a peace to just grab her hand and say, Father, in Jesus' name, help us as we trust you. Because here's the beautiful thing, God. When you told Abraham go, Sarai came with him. Sarah came with him. Sarah didn't say, no, he didn't tell me that he told you that. Sarah said, where you go, I'm going. So God, in this moment, give him the faith to stand. Now, God, I pray for that sister who's had to always figure it out. She's had to be strong by default. She has not had many weak moments. She's never had really had a moment to herself to think. From the moment she got here, she's been shaking and moving. And God, right now, there's some things she needs you to do, but can't really connect all the dots. Give her the, the, the faith to just be obedient where she is. God, I pray a very special prayer. We not move until you say move. Not doing it until you say do it. Not going until you say go. So God, in this moment, in this crowded church and on social media and on online and on virtual, digital, digital, I pray right now for a peace about our life. God, some of us are rushing because we don't have peace. It's not even the answers at this point. It's the peace. Give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. What's understanding? Answers. Give us peace. That trumps answers. Give us a peace that if the bank account ain't big enough, we'll say, God, thank you. Give us a peace that if we wake up in the morning, God, and everything is just different, God, thank you. God, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. So, God, give us that peace, that obedient, that faith to remain obedient in any situation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Jump on your feet. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, church. Was that okay today? Was that okay today? Do me a favor. Somebody shout, ouch. ouch. Next Sunday, I'm starting a brand new series entitled, Ouch. Sometimes it hurt, but it helps. It's about to be one of the strongest series we've ever taught. I'm just so excited about where I feel God is taking us. It is so good to see everybody in the building. I see my brother back there with his son. What's up, man? It's just good to see everybody. Can you give yourself a big hand right there? Look at me. If you're online, I want to say this to you. Feel no pressure. I mean, as I saw a pastor saying something the other day that kind of made me cringe. He said, you sitting at home watching church. You need to get your butt up and come to church. What's wrong? And and the Holy Spirit said to me, no, we have a new normal now. There are going to be certain Sundays when the people in this room might watch from online and come back. What do I want a consistent to be? I want a consistent to be you're going to get a word from God. So to those of you who watch us from across the country, I want to take the road less traveled and just say thank you. You could easily cut us off and go to a church down the street. But the fact that you be saying you're part of Rock City from the West Coast, 
from the East Coast all the way from the Midwest. We want to let you know we love you so, 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 so much. We cannot wait to see you guys again in Birmingham. They told me last week a lady came all the way from California just to come to church. Like, is that not insane, man? That is God, man. So I'm excited about that. To those of you in the room, it's just so good to see you. Just thank you for not letting me stand here by myself. I mean this, man, seeing you guys after almost two and a half, three years, it just still does something to me. Ain't no place in the world like church. I don't care what nobody say. Like, I don't care how much money you get, how much status you get. Being in church, it's just a different feeling. So I'm excited about that, and I love you. Listen, maybe you want to go deeper in God. That's what we're pushing now. Um, one of the things I stated in my State of the Church address to my staff that I'm going to be sharing with you guys soon is that God called us to fulfilled mission versus field rooms fulfilled mission versus field rooms pre-pandemic my whole goal was to put as many people in the room as i could and get jesus to them holy spirit is now saying no it's not about filling the room it's about filling their heart we don't want a big church we want big people and so as we do that we're putting a lot of energy behind pathway to purpose today at 2 p.m we're having Pathway to Purpose. It's all digital. You can be cooking Sunday dinner and just get some tools to help you become a better person. That's something that we're really putting a lot of our energy and our efforts to. I told my team, people development is a big priority for me right now. Loving our volunteers. We're doing crazy stuff now, like trying to rent out Regents Ballpark just for a big old kickball tournament. We're trying to have a good time and show people that we thank you for ushering. We thank you for uh, being a part of our ministry at the 9 o'clock service. I stood outside and I was holding signs. I felt like I was outside the place where you get your free cell phone. I was just holding the signs. But to see people smile when they came in the gate, that's why we do that, man. So I just thank you. Do me a favor. I want to push everybody to Devo Energy this week. This week we're talking about faith. And I really believe, hear me when I say this, some of us are settling back into our old habits. Come on now. You outside. Don't let outside get back in you. Okay, so I want to I want to call our church to a reset. In the morning, Devo Energy, I'm going to be on there with them. I want you to join me on Devo Energy in the morning. Let's talk about faith, the pilgrimage of faith. Whenever God calls you to something, it's a pilgrimage. You go to a place you don't know. I want to talk about that with you so we can just lock in and be what God is calling us to be. If you're giving, you know how to give. You can give at the, at the exit. You can text IROC with the amount you wish to give to 28950. Uh, and I'm just so excited about what God is doing. Father God, our answer is yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes to your way. Now, God, I pray a special prayer, a very simple prayer. Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday. I'll be standing right here. God bless you.